everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to be doing a basics tutorial, and it's going to be on conditioning hard clay. And I know I've had a couple of people who have asked me to do this particular video, so I thought, why not? Let's go ahead <laughs> and try to get as much as I can out of the way. So right here, I'm bringing in my clear translucent um, liquid polymer clay, and it's already in a small baby food jar, or this was actually a pet food jar a friend gave to me. Um, anyways, what I did was I took it out of the plastic container here. I even cut that thing in half after I got as much out as I could, stuck it all in this baby food jar, and then I used like a few drops of baby oil to mix it up. And this works fantastic for liquid polymer clay. Now this clay has already been, I wanna say worked with a little bit. I mean, I've already put some baby oil in and I'm putting in just a little bit more. I do this every once in a while um, because what happens is the clay gets hard on the bottom and <laughs> you can't use it when it's hard on the bottom. So between stirring it up on just a little, every once in a while, just stirring this up so it works for me. And then I do every once in a while, add in a little bit more baby oil a few drops. I, I do five to seven drops of baby oil and I don't do a ton. Don't do half a bottle. <laughs> I did that one time. It was not a good thing. <laughs> I had to pour out half of it. I was like, okay, way too much. <laughs> Either that or add in a whole lot more clay. But no, you just need a small amount just to get this thing working. And as you can tell here, you want it to get it where it just drips right off of that knife. Right here, I thought I'd show you guys how I store my liquid polymer clay too. I found these containers, I it was at the container store, I believe. Anyway, I wanna say they were two or three ounce bottles. If you don't have a container store or you don't know, okay, well, where would I get these bottles? You can always go and find a spice rack and it doesn't matter if it's an old one or a new one, but with the bottles in it, and then this way, then you could put your liquid um, clay in there, no problem, okay? It works really great. Just make sure that the top, the opening that goes into the bottle, that it's big enough that you could go ahead and stir it up. This is why in a lot of ways, I have my two jars off to the side, these two right here, that I go ahead and stir up and condition my clay in right there because they're a little bit more open mouth on the top and easier to get into. So I'll pour my extra, which is in the background there in those other vials, into these vials and then work it so that it will be a workable combination for me. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and condition some really hard Fimo clay. And this, I have to tell you guys, there's a little story behind this. I got a box of clay from a lady who she had, uh, I think, arthritis in her hands, and it was very hard for her to condition clay. And she just said, listen, Laura, this, this is really hard clay, and I just can't condition it anymore, and I just want to give this to you. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> you know. And so she gave me the clay, and you know, it was one of these things that I thought, oh my gosh, I got to train, how do I condition this really hard clay? And over time, it has kind of sat on my shelf. This clay is at least, at least 15 years old. And I want you guys to notice right here, you see how it's really, really light and then it's really, really dark where I have cut into this? This means it's gonna go really crummy. See how I have to push it into the machine and I'm getting crumbs. I'm getting crumbs. And I know many of you were like, oh yeah, I've got, I've got clay that has done that. Oh, it's a misery. <laughs> well, here, I'm telling you right now, there's a way to get this back where you can actually make it workable for you. And the first way is using baby oil. Now, to me, this is the messiest of ways, okay? I did not wear um, I want to say latex gloves. I probably should have, and I didn't. It's like, okay, you live and you learn. <laughs> but this clay, you know, I added a little bit of baby oil in it, just a few drops, and it started to come back to life. So this is one way of doing it. Now, I know there are those out there that would say, no, we don't recommend you using this. You should use um, conditioner bricks. But 
if you don't have, you know, and some of those conditioner bricks, I hate to say it guys, but they're expensive. I'm sorry, but if you're trying to pinch a dollar and you don't know what else to do, this will work. You can use baby oil, it will be just fine. Um, I've also heard of other people using mineral oil. So if you wanna use mineral oil, you could try that as well. Now, as I was using this, you know, this oil in this clay, it didn't take too long to get it conditioned up. And I think that's what a lot of people kind of want to know. How long does it take you to get this to this point? It didn't take very long, okay? This, and don't think that, you know, this is why I say don't throw your hard clay away. And if you do give it to me, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I love my clay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I um, so anyway, I used a little bit of that baby oil, and yes, it can get messy. As you could tell, it's pretty glistening here. And that said, too, I also use my pasta machine in concert with this. So when I'm conditioning clay, I really don't get away from my pasta machine. I really do need it. Yes, you can hand condition, but it takes forever. And this is the thing that is really something that I'm more aware of that more than anything else, it's time. How much time is it going to take for me to get this hard brick to be workable? <laughs> and for me, if it takes too much time, it's just ridiculous. So this is why I say use the baby oil in concert with your pasta machine when you go ahead and condition this up because trying to do it by hand, it takes forever. You have to work it and work it and work it. And sometimes it won't even come back very well because the oils have come out of it. This is why I actually use baby oil because that you might say that lubricant was gone. That lubricant was completely gone. Now that I've worked up this small sheet of clay into a very viable sheet, I'm taking some of the rest of this hard clay and we're gonna go ahead and condition using a couple other things. The next one will be Vaseline. And this is actually out of the cheap methods of trying to condition clay and you don't wanna spend a lot of money. This is probably the one I like the most. And the reason why I like it so much is because one, it takes hardly anything at all. Look at this. Watch my finger. I'm running Vaseline right over that and look what it does to the clay. It darkens the clay. It puts the lubricant back into the clay so that it will work for you. Now I know there are some polymer clay artists out there who do not approve of Vaseline being used as a conditioner, um, but to me it works for me. And if I've got a hard brick of clay that I don't want to see go to waste and I need to get it conditioned up quickly and I don't want to spend a lot of time conditioning this thing, yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of Vaseline to get this thing going. Because here's the thing, I could use a little bit of Vaseline, get this thing lubricated up, add in more clay, more hard clay, and then if I really want to, add in regular um, brick conditioner. You don't have to stick with just one type of conditioner when you're doing your clay, okay? You just need to get this thing started. And so for me, when I'm going from crumb, yeah, I'm gonna use a little bit of Vaseline, I'm gonna get, get that kind of worked in there, and then I'm gonna run this through my, she my machine, and yes, I use my Atlas Pasta machine in concert with my Vaseline as well, and I do that really throughout here. Part of this, again, it's time. I wanna get this done up as fast as I can. Now I know some people will also say the reason why they don't like the Vaseline technique is because of the durability. It takes away from the durability of the clay. And I have yet to see that and I don't quite understand how that would apply. And I think also it depends upon the context. So if you're creating jewelry, okay. <laughs> I'd say maybe be on the safe side and not use this. But if you're not just doing jewelry and you're trying to do other stuff like I do all the time, <laughs> um, I think there's a little leniency. So it's kind of a judgment call for you. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the Sculpey two ounce conditioner. And I'm also bringing in the mold maker. It's gonna be, um, okay, you guys are probably like, okay, the mold maker. This, the next product after this, the eight ounce brick of mold maker was taken off the shelves 
um, which I was so down about. I was like, they discontinued it. I was like, no, but I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the difference between the two. One, you got an eight inch brick, whereas compared to this, you have a two, in two ounce brick. Also, this was like, to me, it looked different. I almost wonder if they changed the recipe on this conditioner. I'm not certain. <laughs> I might be completely wrong about that. But here was the thing. When I conditioned up this Femal, and this surprised me, it really, really did. The clay color turned slightly lighter. Um, I was not expecting that at all. I was not expecting that. And I think if I use the whole brick, it'll probably go back to the original color. But if I'm just doing a portion of this brick, it was a little bit lighter in color tone. And so that, I was like, wait a minute, this, yeah, right there. I was like, what? <laughs> wait a minute. Um, and I took the clay from the Vaseline version, okay? So it was a little darker. And when I went back to the original brick, the original brick was a little bit more darker. So... I don't understand this. Um, I, because my mold maker originally, when I used my mold maker, I didn't have any problems with that. It seemed like the recipe was such that when I conditioned it up, it did not change color. It did not, you know, change its intensity. Whereas here it was like, whoa, okay. And I have not, it, to be honest, I have not used this brick before. Or, or I should say this two ounce Sculpey brick before. So I was, I was slightly shocked that it would be that way. So I'm bringing in Donna Cato's conditioning bar and this is the first time I've ever used it. I bought it at my local Hobby Lobby and I, I'm like, okay, I hope this works out really good for me. Here's the thing, Sculpey has a two ounce brick. This is a one pound bar. So I'm, I'm hoping it'll go really well. And I'm taking just a little bit, just take a little bit off of this, right? And place this, and this is like crumb, right? This is crumb clay. And I was really happy with this thing. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> um, the only thing that I was having trouble with in this was it was a little bit similar to my Sculpey in the regard that the Sculpey conditioner in the regard that it kind of was a light color. Now, maybe, just maybe, I need to add in more clay, and that could very well be. And that's probably what maybe I needed to do on the Sculpey version, too, is I just needed to add in more of the clay instead of the conditioner. But if you use the conditioner, it can be, you know, more than the clay, then you are going to get a lighter tone, and that's what I found. Another thing here, though, also, is that this clay, it conditioned up pretty fast. So that was kind of nice. And I think a lot of it was just because this bar I bought, holy cow, talk about, just seemed very soupy, very, very loosey-goosey. <laughs> and it wanted to work well for me when it came to conditioning up really hard. And really, if you look at this crumb type clay. So if you really want a, a nice way to take any of your hard clay and it's in crumbs or whatever, and you want to condition it up, this is a nice way too. I would also recommend the Sculpey as well. Both work. I'm just saying that if you have more conditioner in there than you do the actual clay, yeah, it might turn color. So here I wanted to show you guys my results of like where you see the baby oil and the Vaseline on top. And then you have the Sculpey 2 ounce and then the original Sculpey Mold Maker and Kato Conditioner Bar on the bottom. And you could definitely tell the different tonage in these. That was really interesting to me. And mind you, I am conditioning up a hard brick of Fimo. So I haven't tried the Sculpey brand. I haven't tried the Kato brand or any of that. It might not apply the way I have the results here when it comes to those. So let's move on and see what those look like. Mm -hmm. 
I am now going to go ahead and take some Sculpey clay and I had some really old versions. That was the really old version and then I had some French blue and then I had the red right there. And I decided let's go ahead and use the French blue clay and I'm not sure if this is um, even a part of their lineup of colors right now or not. But I thought, well, let's just go ahead and try it because it had that crumbly like look on the inside. You see it where you get that lighter tone to that darker like look and you know then it's going to be really crumbly. It's going to be kind of a mess and that's kind of what it did. And eventually I just got to the point where I'm like, oh, to heck with this. <laughs> I used my blade and I just thought we're just going to and my fingers to crumble it up more. I thought this way then I'm kind of taking it from the same stance as I did with the Fimo. All right, so again, we're going to bring in the baby oil. And again, here, I used a couple of drops. I want to say about seven or eight. I didn't use a ton or just a little bit just to get you started in getting this brick kind of back together. And sure enough, the Sculpey clay will come right back. Now I'm bringing in the Vaseline and again I'm doing that same thing where I'm using a finger here and I actually had too much on my finger when I put, <laughs> this is why I say go easy on this stuff. You don't need to have a ton to get this thing reconstituted. I was so, I, I was like going, oh, okay, that was way too much. I even knew it when I, when I put that down, I was like, way too much Vaseline because it became soupy. I had to do up about, I want to say half that brick <laughs> just to get it like where it was a decent consistency without it being too sticky. So understand you only need to have a little bit. Don't use a ton, okay? Just use a little bit. That's all you really need to get it started, to get it into a bit of a workable state. So here I wanted to go ahead and show you just, okay, it's matching up to the color, all right? And that was using the Vaseline. That one was the baby oil. So I wanted to say, okay, it looks like it's the same color. It hasn't changed it or anything like that. I'm now going to bring in my Sculpey, the two ounce brick, and I'm going to start working this in with some of that hard clay too. Now remember also, I'm going to start running this through my Atlas pasta machine as well. Constantly throughout here, I'm, I use my conditioners in concert with the Atlas pasta machine. You can work this into your hands and do that, but like I said, to me it takes more time. I would rather just go ahead, use that Atlas machine, and take the time factor down. Okay, so right here I'm showing you that brick. Now look at that. This clay is the same color as the original brick. And I don't know if that's just because it's Sculpey clay and Sculpey product together, or if it's just the fact that maybe I used more polymer clay with the conditioner and so it kept its color. That's the only thing. I'm not quite sure there. But I suspect, and I lay odds on the fact that it's probably the fact that I used less conditioner and more clay. I think that's really more of what we're looking at here. This takes a little bit longer though too. When you use less conditioner, it takes a little longer. That's why I think I liked the Vaseline so much was because I could use a ton of that and it was never going to change color on me. Whereas with this, it's got a little bit of a white consistency to it. And so I wonder if it lightens it up just kind of naturally. But if you don't care, <laughs> then it doesn't really matter. Now right here, I'm bringing in the mold maker conditioner. And this is one, like I said, I, I didn't show that on the Fimo one but I love this conditioner. I've used it for a long, long time. I had a few um, extra bricks stored up for myself, so I've been using it, you know, very sparingly, <laughs> but it's been one of my favorites. So if you guys really are like, you know, I wish they bring the mold maker back, you know, I would call Sculpey. <laughs> Tell them, guys, listen, bring that mold maker back. I really like that. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so I'm bringing in Donna Cato's conditioning bar one more time, and I'm just gonna cut off a little bit more of that conditioner, and I'm gonna work this into the Sculpey. And to tell you the truth, guys, I didn't see much difference. It works really great. It's a great conditioner. Um, I wanna say that um, when I ran this through, and you'll see it in just a second, that the clays all had the same kind of look. In other words, what I mean is that the tone or the intensity of the clay did not change that much. It really didn't. However, that being said, when you look at what I have here for my samples, it did seem to me like just, just so slightly, I mean, it was really slight, so slightly that the baby oil and the Vaseline was just a little bit darker in tone, but just so slight. I mean, hardly anything there. Otherwise, the color of this clay did not change at all. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna condition a really hard brick of Cato polymer clay. And I wanna say, again, this was in my box that I was given of really hard clay. And yeah, it was definitely hard. <laughs> I ran this through and I, you know, I mean, it kind of kept together a little bit, but when you put two pieces together and then run it through, yeah, I kind of came up with some crumb. I was like, going, oh, okay, this is a hard brick. Here we go. And after a bit, I just thought, okay, fine, just start making it into crumb and we'll start conditioning it that way. So the first one up was my baby oil. And this was a surprise. And you're like, how so? <laughs> When I used the baby oil on this Kato brick, and you know, maybe I should do another couple of Kato bricks just to make sure, but you know, with this hard consistency, when I started using the baby oil, it didn't feel like that particular element wanted to go into the clay. And I'm starting to wonder if maybe it's because it's slightly different. Kato clay does bake at 300, okay? All the other clays bake at 275. And I'm starting to wonder if there's enough of a difference in the recipe of the polymer clay that it might be a little bit more resistant to like say baby oil and Vaseline. It does come together, but it took a lot longer. Um, it just seemed to take a lot longer to get the thing to work for me. And it just seemed like that the little chunks wanted to stay in little chunks. And maybe it's just, I had to work it and work it and work it. Maybe it would have been better if I had it as just a sheet. But when I was trying to put it through, it still, it kind of came out this blocky kind of thing. I, I had a hard time with it. And with this being said, don't think that it doesn't work. It does work, but it took a while. I mean, you could tell right here, I'm finally getting a little bit of a sheet with that baby oil. So it works, but it just took a while. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and after I have this one done, I'm gonna bring in my Vaseline and we're gonna go ahead and start working this into the Kato clay as well. Now, when I started doing the same thing here, again, I kind of got that little bit of a blocky kind of thing. And again, it might've been that this clay is just so hard. <laughs> I mean, I remember stories of when people first said when Kato came out that to condition their clay, they'd have their car run it over. <laughs> I thought, now that would be interesting to see. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, it's much softer now, don't get me wrong, but I, I just thought it's so funny that somebody would run it over with their car. <laughs> anyway, um, from here, I just kind of bring it together. I try to get this thing to where it comes together using the Vaseline, and it does, it does. It just took longer. Again, I'm kind of doing it from this kind of a thing where I rubbed it on there. It didn't make a difference. It seemed to, again, it just seemed like it doesn't want to come together as easily. So I don't know if that's just because there might be a little bit of a difference in the Kato clay from other clays or not, but it does work eventually. It just takes a little bit more time. Okay, here I'm gonna start bringing in that two ounce brick again of my Sculpey um, kind of conditioner. And I took like three slices, no big deal. And then I thought, let's go ahead and just work this into the Kato clay. Here's the thing, with this brick, I found this actually, on this end of the spectrum, this went a little bit faster. And I think it's because the brick, okay, because it's a solid piece, if you will, it constitutes it faster in this regard than when you're using the oil or the Vaseline. 
So there are pros and cons to all of this stuff. Um, I was just, I was like, okay, you are going together a lot faster and I don't have to work at this nearly as hard. So if you're thinking about trying to, you know, if you love Cato Clay and you love working in it a lot, yeah, Sculpey, their conditioner, that works great. It will come together a lot faster. I mean, look at this here. It, it really came together fast. Again, I had to bring in just a little bit of my mold maker to use on this. And, you know, one of the reasons why I loved mold maker so much was it not only it, it took the clay to a really nice, oh, just a nice sheet for me right away, but it was, oh, I didn't have to do much to condition up my clay when it came to this stuff. It just did it for me. Um, mind you, I used quite a bit of it, but I never had any problems with really discoloration of the clay or anything. It was always such a wonderful product. Plus, I got eight ounces of it. I didn't get two ounces. Um, if there's a beef I have, it's probably that. <laughs> it's like, I only get two ounces. It doesn't do hardly anything. You know, it's like, I'd r rather have an eight ounce brick than a two. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to compare apples to apples with Kato. And I'm taking some of her conditioner bar and I'm gonna add this into her Kato clay and we'll just see how this conditions up. I have a feeling it's gonna be really nice. You know, what can I say? I, I love Kato clay. It's wonderful, especially for cane work. One of my favorite clays to work in. Um, but again, look at this. It does come together really nice. So here's the results in using the Kato clay and just notice there the Vaseline and the baby oil slightly, I don't know, it just seems like it's a darker yellow and I don't know why, but I'm like going, okay, the Sculpey two ounce and of course my Kato conditioner one, those seem like they were a little bit brighter. Even the mold maker was slightly brighter. So keep that in mind. I don't know, maybe they're, maybe I'm doing it wrong, <laughs> but that's just something that I came up with in my results here. All right, so something that's been mulling around in my brain, and this is an off-brand clay. I use some Craft Smart, I believe, polymer clay, yep. And I thought, let's go ahead and try something really different. So I decided, because, you know, I thought, well, if baby oil works, would other oils work as well? So right here in a dish and right there in the bottle, I have in the dish some olive oil. And then right here in the little cap, we have some vegetable oil. And I just thought, let's just see what happens, right? I mean, it's probably not even gonna work, but I thought, well, let's just try, right? So I rubbed it into the clay and <laughs> I was like, no way, man. No way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, it works. <laughs> um, I just decided that I think when it comes to polymer clay, when it comes to that plasticizer, it requires a little bit of oil. <laughs> it's kind of like your car. You have to have oil in it to make it work. <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking that there is something to this where you can add a little bit of oil, even veggie oil or, you know, olive oil to get it going. My husband was like, why are you using olive oil? That's so expensive. And I'm like, I just wanted to see if it would do it. <laughs> but right here, um, I just, I was just really surprised. And I just wanted to show this to you guys just so you knew. So when I used the uh, Craft Smart clay, I thought, let's go ahead and use some of that really crummy kind of female clay. And guess what? It worked just as well too. And it shouldn't have surprised me. I'm like going, well, if it works in one, it's going to work in the other. And sure enough, it did. So I would say when it comes to conditioning clay, there's a couple of factors you need to take into account. One, the cost of your conditioner. If you don't mind spending a little bit of money and getting a conditioner that works it up really fast and you, you would rather have that 
and have a little bit more of a quality of, you know, clay, I guess, then I would say go and get the bricks. You know, go get the um, Sculpey or the, um, the Kato one. Both work really great, okay? But if you're trying to watch your pennies and you really want a cost-effective where it's not going to cost you a ton to recondition maybe a brick of clay that might have been cheap in the first place <laughs> or might have been like, okay, it's been around for a while and you just don't want to have to deal with it, then maybe go to the cheaper versions of either your Vaseline or your baby oil or, you know, things like that. Number two it would be durability. And durability is such that I would say I would probably lean more into the Sculpey uh, conditioner and the Kato conditioner because you'd probably have a little bit more of a durability factor there than if you went to, say, your oil and your Vaseline, okay? However, that said, that's also in the eye of the beholder because if you're doing jewelry, yeah, I would definitely look at that. If you're doing other things that don't get a lot of, uh, how do we say, hands-on from humans, <laughs> then maybe you could go to a little bit more of a cheaper version of conditioner. Three, time. Time is a huge factor here because, at least for me, it is. I, you know, I, I want this conditioned up fairly quickly and I don't want to have to wait around for it to get reconstituted, okay? And I found that when it came to just using a little bit of baby oil or using a little bit of that Vaseline at first, especially on crumbs, it constitutes in my mind a little bit faster than even the bricks. But once I get a small amount of that clay conditioned up, I will add in some of that brick type of conditioner and bring in a little bit more of the durability. This way then, if there is a chance of where I take away from the durability of my clay at first, I counteract it with the brick of conditioner later, giving me really the best of all worlds. All right, so this is the end result in doing the different ways of conditioning my polymer clay. Please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'm always wondering what you're thinking. Otherwise, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.